Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part 36 of my fitness database series. And like I say every time, whether or not you're building a database for fitness, this fitness database is about building a database. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter what your database is about. You could be collecting baseball cards, whatever. I'm showing you all kinds of cool tricks and tips and stuffs that you could do in your database. All right, let's get to it. All righty, folks, we are back. And um, once again, after having been using this database myself for the past few days, uh, just got some you know new things I've been doing. Um, I really like having this meal section over here as kind of like it breaks it up. All right, so lunch and then lunch starts here. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh, when we add meal items, which we're gonna get to very soon, um, I'm gonna have the first item here be the name of the meal and then the items below it, right? And then we'll leave all these ones blank in the middle because you can tell what it was. And this just kind of visually breaks the day up, right? Ooh, let's go back. Like yesterday, I started my lunch here and I put some items in, right? Um, I've been putting in workouts. I don't know if I mentioned this previously. I put in my workouts and I estimate the amount of calories burned. It's not that I'm trying to give myself free calories, but I kind of want a, a closer, uh, you know, uh, measurement. So if my BMR, is, if what I need to survive every day is 2,500 calories for a guy my size, if I burn three ex, 300 extra exercising, it kind of offsets my protein shake that I take after that and all that. So uh, that's just calorie management, but that's how I'm using it to track. And I think later on when we get to the workout section, we're gonna, I'm going to do that. We're going to add the workouts here. Um, still, if you're trying to lose weight, though, like I am, don't count on this. You're going to lose most of your weight by proper calorie management. Because like me, for example, I burn 2,500 calories a day just existing. You can work out for a half hour, 45 minutes, and still only burn 300 calories. So that's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. But the bonus with lifting weights is that the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn even at rest. So that's that's good to do. And like cardio, don't go you know running four hours thinking you're burning all these calories. You are. You're burning a lot. But um, you know that's good for heart health and lungs and stuff like that. But uh, People get carried away sometimes. I know I used to. But anyways, back to database stuff. Several people have called me out in um, in both my forums on my website and in YouTube in the comments section and stuff uh, saying that you can't properly add items to other days if you don't use the box down here. Now, we have it set so that if, if we're on a different day, like here I am on Sunday, right? If I try to add an item, it adds just fine because this code handles that. But if I come up here and try to type something in, look at this, it jumps forward to today. Okay, that's just how the code is written in the insert event. So we have to fix that. Let's do that first. And I want to caution everybody. I want to let you guys know, this database isn't finished until it's finished. <laughs> I know we're in part, what, 30 something. All right, what's today? 36? So there's going to be a lot more that I'm changing. So I can envision easily 50 some parts to this by the time we add all the workout stuff in. So don't don't panic if something's not working. If something's not working, post a comment about it. Let me know about it so I can investigate. But there's going to be a lot of little things like this that even I won't come across. So I love hearing from you guys, and I do want to get your feedback. But don't panic. Right? We'll fix it. Okay? All right. So let's delete that item right there. Let's take a look at the code. Now, if you use this button to add stuff, let's bring this down here. Okay. Um. Right here is where we add food item to log. Let's let's definition that. It jumps us to that. Okay. And right here is the code that determines what the date is. All right? It says if the date value of now equals the date value of the log date, then food date time is now, and then we format it. Otherwise, it sets the food date time equal to the log date and then formats it. So you get the log date at midnight. OK, but this code is not in where we manually add stuff, right? If we manually add something by typing it in here, what event handles that? Well, that's going to be the before insert event, which is this guy. And all before insert does is this. And then it updates the food day time, which sets it to today's date. So that's why that doesn't work. So we need to call that other code from in here, but I don't want to duplicate my code. All right, so let's go back where we just were. Control Shift F2. That'll bring us back to the last spot. And then we'll go into the add food item to log again right here. 
Okay. Now we're going to isolate this stuff right here. Okay. And we're going to make a function that's going to handle that. Because we're going to basically have the same code running in two spots, so I don't want duplicated code, right? We're going to make our own new function. We're going to call it proper log date time. And that will look at, you know, if we're on today's date or a previous date and set it accordingly and then return that value. Okay. So let's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this out and put that on my notepad because we're going to do something else with it here. Let me put it on. Here's my notepad sticking on notepad. Okay. So in here, we're going to say the RS log food date time equals our new function is going to return it for us. So proper log date time. And then we can format that using our format food log time function. So RS log food time text equals the code we already have, which I have on my clipboard here, which is this guy. And we'll put that there, but we're now we're going to be formatting this thing okay all right so that simplifies this a little bit so basically we're going to set the food date time to whatever the proper time should be right if we're on today it'll be right now today's date and time if we're on a different day still make it that day but make it that day at midnight or whatever or the last day of the we'll, we'll figure that out later Okay, but this will handle knowing what day we're on. Now, once we know the proper date that goes in there, this will then get formatted as we had before and everything should work just fine. Okay, so now we can get rid of those spaces there because we know what we did. I like to just set that apart so you can see it. Now we got to write this function to get the proper log date time. We'll put it right up here. All right, so we'll make it a public function. You probably only this form will use it, but you never know. Sometimes in the future, I like to call stuff from other forms. Uh, let's call it proper log date time takes nothing in, but it's going to return a date value. Okay. Well, spacing sometimes bother me. And, and when it's a function like this or a sub that does something that it might not be self-explanatory, I like to put it in the comments. So it's going to return uh, the current date time. If the log date shows today, otherwise, It'll return midnight on the date showing. Okay, we might change it later to put it at the end of the date because usually if you add stuff, you want to put it on the end. Well, I will figure that out later though. Okay, so how's this going to work? Very similar to what we have on our notepad. Where's the notepad? Come back here, notepad. All right, we're going to be looking at this stuff similarly. I'm going to paste this in here, but we don't need all of it. Okay, if the date value of now is the same as the date value of the log date. We're still on the form, so we can look at the log date. That's that guy up top, right? Where are you? That's log date right there, right? The date that we're on. If that's the case, now I don't want to be changing this stuff. What I want to do is I want to return that value. So in that case, return that. Get rid of the second line because we don't need to format it anymore. Otherwise, we're going to return log date. And that's it. See? So what happens is it comes into here, you're adding a food item, okay? Here it's gonna say, okay, the food date time equals proper log date time, come up to here. All right, is the date that I'm on equal to today's date? Yep, all right, return now. If it's not, you're gonna return the log date, the date up top at midnight. That'll get down here and saved in the table. Now we just have to make sure that we call this from the insert event too. So let's go find that insert event again. Where is that? It's a form event before inserts right here. And see, it's only setting food time text and then setting that equal to the time value of now and then updating the date based on what's in that box. Okay. So instead of that, we're going to get rid of this. And here we're going to say the food date time equals the proper log date Time, that function we just wrote. So as you insert an item, it's going to set that value. All right, save it, debug, compile once in a while. Let's go back over here, close it, close it. You can get rid of that notepad stuff now. 
All right, open her up. Now, if I type in a value down here, it works. That's correct. It's currently about 6, 10 p.m. Okay, let's delete that. Let's go to a previous day. Oh, here I am on Sunday. Test, look at that. See, it put 12 a.m. on that date in there. See, and now we're golden. The only issue you might have is if you start typing in at a time value and you start to put like a four in there, it, it'll flash that 12 a.m., but it still puts the 4 p.m. in there. So the date should still be in the field. Let's see, 4 p.m. And okay, it should, it should have kept that value. Let's see, let's requery it. It did, okay, so it sets the date and then you can still change the time because the date's already in the field at that point. Okay? I do kind of like the idea though, when we add something, it comes in. Yeah, see it's coming up top. Let's make it come in at the bottom. So we'll look and see what else is on that date and we'll add it at the end of it. If it's not today's current date. We'll start there in tomorrow's video. All right, so that's gonna do it for part 36. See you tomorrow for part 37. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.